good afternoon. Welcome to number 421, episode 421, for the sake of giving it a good title. Um, and today's topic is, are you scared of falling in love or are you tired of being single? Or I should say again, lonely being single and what to do about it, what a quandary you're in. So I'll hash out that title in a minute. But before I get to that, let me start by saying welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I do these talks every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And so every, do, every day I do these talks at 5 p.m. Pacific time, unless things change, but so far so good. And this is number 421 in an ongoing series of daily talks. And today's topic is this um, indecision point in a way. Basically, are you scared of falling in love? And I'll get to that in a second. And also, are you lonely being single? Or fed up being single or anything like that? So I'll cover both of those in a moment. I'm calling it what a quandary just to spice it up a little bit. So let me just talk for a minute about each part. Um, this was inspired by a friend's post, and so I'm going to share with, with her when I finish, because she may want to re watch this. So that she talks about the, the fear of being hurt in relationships, and that's really what I want to speak to. Um, oh, she's fitting a little bit. Oh, well. Continuing right along, this arena of relationship conversation is challenging for many people because for a lot of people, maybe not you, but somebody you know, in past relationships, you got hurt. And in fact, in past relationships, you got, you were described perhaps destroyed, emotionally ripped apart, um, devastated even. And these are some of the words people use in their relationship post-mortems. And I'm using that term intentionally because the relationship is dead as far as they're concerned. But the challenge is when that relationship is over, most people tend to carry the wounds of that relationship into the future. And I've talked about the um, impermeability of your heart once you have too much wounds. But I want to speak to a different part of it, which is the fear. And for some people, not everybody, but some people, to actually um, say this. Well, to even go on dates again is an extremely challenging experience because the wounds of the past are so fresh still, even three, four years later, yes, they don't go, they don't scar over that well, that the person is living in fear, even on a date with somebody totally different. Now, some things I've talked about before, which I'll put in the background just so you have context. <clears throat> For most of us, we have this habit, and I'm including myself because I've been there, done that, <laughs> got the t-shirt that our past relationships tend to repeat in some of the experiences we have with future relationships. And until we do some changes in our wiring internally, and I've talked about this several times recently, we tend to repeat the same patterns again and again. So if you got wounded and hurt and destroyed in a past relationship, that fear may be justified going forward if you don't do something different. And the key is doing something different. I'll get to that too. On the other side of the coin, there are many people out there who would rather be single because they're afraid of being hurt, but also really fed up with being single because they're feeling lonely. I've covered that before too, by the way. After 421 broadcasts, I do, I realize I've covered a lot of this content, but a lot of times it's re-clarifying re and recombining it to give you more value. So one of these things I want to speak to is the feeling that somehow being alone is wrong and being single is wrong. So first of all, if you have been that running that belief in your head, I'm going to disavow you of that training because being single is totally fine. In fact, being single can sometimes be the best place to be because you get to learn to have autonomy. Now, for many people, their thought of being single is that somehow they're missing out or they're incomplete or they're not doing what they should be doing, which is getting married, settle down, have kids, have a family, and then retire. That's not my idea of fun, ultimately, to do that, that, that um, dream type. Choosing a relationship to add to your life is one thing. And that's the thing I very much support. I'm encouraging is what I would recommend to anybody is choose a relationship that adds to who you are, not to make you feel like you're finally whole. There is a, a fairy tale conversation out there that people carry that when they meet their love of their lives, they'll feel complete, they'll feel whole. They're wondering where they've been all their lives. You complete me, I'll die without you. All this bullshit stuff that love songs have, love songs have sung to us for the last 50, 60 years. Being single. Being alone, being at one with yourself is actually a very healthy place to be. 
and there's nothing wrong with that. So, the so choose relationship from that place is additive, as I mentioned. And the other part is choosing a relationship that is to grow beyond what, you're, what you are about is a powerful place to become more of who you can be as well, because the relationship will um, inspire and challenge you to be more of who you can be. So that's a good thing, just so you know. But I want to speak to this thing about the pain, because this part's the part that's, that's distressing most people, is this fear of being hurt again in a relationship, being wounded because that happened in the past. And yes, yes, if you do the same thing again you did before, it's possible you have the same experience you had before. This is kind of the idea of doing the same thing again and again, expecting different results, known as insanity, quoted, um, quoted to being said by um, Albert Einstein. I'm not sure if it's attributed to him, actually. I've been hearing that it's not actually his quote, but it may be. Anyway, that quote rings true, which is, if you do the same thing again and again and expect different results, you are basically being insane because you got to do something different to get something different. So if you repeat the same cycle of relationships, you can get the same experience of relationships, quite likely. The person may change, but you haven't. And that is where the key is. Because it doesn't matter who the other person is, if you stay the same, you're going to encounter the same experiences, the same challenges, the same frustrations at times, and the same hurts if you don't do something different. So, a key component of this um, infomercial <laughs> Let's give another title. Is to actually take back your life. So when you're single, especially, and I've talked about this as well. I keep saying that, but the reality is that I've covered this a lot recently. So I guess in a way, this is a um, distillation of some things I've shared recently. First of all, get to know who you are. Love yourself, appreciate yourself, fall in love with who you are. Do that first before you date anybody else, because frankly, it's the best way to attract a healthy relationship. I've covered that already this week. Secondly, when you are looking to go on dates, look for somebody who is different from you in the sense that they will expand you. Different from you in the sense that they have their own lives. Ideally, someone who's done the same thing you've done, which is get to fall in love with themselves. So that way they're not looking to hang on to you because they need you, and you're not looking to hang on to them either. This is a powerful place to build a relationship from. When both of you are whole, and you're looking to add to who you are and enjoy the experience of sharing with somebody else the life that you're already living, not something where you're waiting for them to show up before you live your life. I think you feel me on that one. Third one, or third key. Take the time, especially when you're single, to resolve your history that's been um, threatening to overwhelm you with pain and hurt and suffering. That wound from the past, that hurt from the past relationships, they may or may not repeat, but if you keep worrying about them, they're going to be more encouraged to repeat. And if you keep worrying about them, you're still keeping those pains present in your heart. You don't want to be wounded that way. So seek counsel, support, guidance, whether it's reading books, going to retreats, seeing a coach, a counselor, a relationship expert, like myself, somebody who can help you with this. And I'll tell you then how you can get in touch with me, by the way. So that's number three. Number four. There's number four, I think. By the way, these are not scripted, so I'm just letting things come through, but I feel there's another piece coming through, which is, the, which is this. Relationships are not usually a place just to hang out and do nothing. Relationships, in, in my world, I'll put it that way, are a place to explore, grow, and become more of who you can already be, as I mentioned. So get clear about what you want, and get clear about who you want to be, when you are in partnership. And I don't mean going from being lacking to being whole. That's not what I'm talking about here because you should be whole and I recommend you be whole before you can get into a relationship, as I said. So getting clear about what you want in partnership that you want to explore, expand, and share with somebody helps you align your energy to attracting somebody that will fulfill that with you. And ideally, as the, um, the magic works, when you meet somebody else who also knows clarity about what they want in the relationship that actually overlays the one you have, there's a unity that happens between you and the other person that is like I would call a gestalt, which is the greater the sum is greater than the the sum is greater than the individual parts. So the two of you are already whole, and when you come together, you add to each other and add to yourselves and create a much more potent, expansive, and fulfilling relationship. That is a powerful way to live with love and to live in a relationship. But the key one, as I mentioned, in those four is to really do the work to heal your wounds. 
Because if you're afraid of getting hurt again, you're going to choose badly in your relationship choices. You may tend to stay single more than you need to, and you won't be taking care of yourself. Because those wounds, those hurts, are eating away at your insides. And you want to be healthy. And I mean that emotionally speaking. Although there are, there are studies about saying how you know, suppressed, upset, upset um, uh, repressed resentment and upset, repressed guilt can actually cause ulcers and even cancer. So I'm not saying that's the truth. I think the studies are out there talking about this stuff. So just be aware that if you're not resolving your own past wounds and past hurts, you know, you're, you're creating a deficit in your system. So take care of yourself. The other part also, there's a little PS on this one, is that when you get into a relationship, there is the possibility that relationship doesn't work out, that maybe you'll get hurt at the end or you don't get what you want and you feel wounded at the end of it. Get clear at the beginning of the relationship. This is a key piece. Get clear at the beginning of the relationship to really um, own your space. One of the biggest gifts that I've learned by doing this work is the more that you love yourself, the more that you fall in love with who you are, the more you own your space. When you're in a relationship, if that person leaves or, or decides to get upset and quits and rejects you or dumps you, your recovery time is much faster when you're already loving yourself. The challenge people face when they get wounded in past relationships is because they are putting all their eggs in the other person's basket. And that is not a smart move. So what they're doing, literally, is saying, I trust you enough to take care of everything in this relationship. I'm not taking responsibility. And that is what I call about codependent relationship. So to put the energy of responsibility back on yourself when you're single, before you even start a relationship, where you can put the focus on being, um, that's what I'm looking for, autonomous, that's a good word, so when you're in a relationship, the other person, they do whatever they do. Ideally, pick someone you want to be with and play with, of course, but if they go off the rails in your mindset in terms of they don't follow, they don't just want to stay with you or there's a breakup or you do something wrong, whatever happens, and they decide to quit or dump you or leave, you will take it less personally. And they may be right, perhaps. Well, if you did something, you know, what, if you did something stupid, own it, take care of yourself, change it, rewire, make up for it, make an apology, whatever needs to happen but you won't be as ruined, as wrecked, as emotionally hurt if you already take care of yourself first. So, self-love to get love, self-love to give love, self-love to share love. That's a mantra you can live your life on. I think that's it. I want to get those points out. Quick review. Yeah, cover both sides. So if you see watching me for the first time, quick, quick recap by the way. Um, I do these talks every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook Live. Um, the replays go onto my business page on um, Barry Selby, the author, is my business page. They also will get stored on YouTube, so you may be watching it on YouTube later on and not see the comments. Not that there's any this time, but they happen occasionally. I do tend to quote the comments when I can. Third place is I have a podcast now, which is Messages of the Masculine on iTunes. You can search it there and start subscribing. I'm slowly loading these broadcasts there. So, thank you, Earl. So saying, hi, my brother, life is great, and keep sharing that truth. My pleasure, thanks for the feedback, Earl, I appreciate that. Um, so again, iTunes, Messages from the Black Masculine is the podcast. Subscribe there, get my broadcast. I'm gonna be adding more of my, these talks to that podcast, so you listen to them when you're driving, running around when you haven't got a chance to look at the screen. I'm here to help you, you know? And again, if you want to reach out to get some help from me, what I recommend is getting a discovery session with me. A book time on my calendar so we sit and talk over the phone or in person if you're local. Go to barrysilver.com forward slash chat. Sign up there and get the help you need. And that, I think, is that. Um, thanks for being with me as always. I'll be back again tomorrow again at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, if there's any questions about this broadcast, please put them below. And if you know anybody should watch it, please share it with them. I'll be back in tomorrow with some new content. We'll see what it is. And uh, with that, I wish you well, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you again soon.